This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Where we want to educate you about our market, empower you to make wise decisions, and help you engage with our expert contributors. The market is hot. There's very little inventory out there. Buyers are, you know, they're struggling. They're, they're having, we have, we have a term, new term now called buyer's fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a thing. It's a real thing right now. And, and I have a number of buyers that are trying to find homes and we're writing really aggressive offers, but we're struggling. In the competition for homes, you're dealing with two major categories to start, which is those paying cash and those getting financing. That's where the game kind of starts, right? And we, as a general rule, uh, cash has more leverage because it can offer less contingencies. It could move faster. There's less things that go wrong with it potentially. That's the concept behind it, right? First of all, if you're paying cash, we need what we call proof of funds. I need to, I need to show the seller that you're not just saying you have enough money. Right. You've got enough money to right. do this. When yeah. the offer is submitted. Yes, right at, the, right at the submission of offer, right at the very beginning. Barring the ability to have cash, if you have to have financing, you need a quality. You gotta have a letter. I would tell you that as, as financed buyers, you really have three options uh, when it comes to these versions of pre-approvals, right? Uh, to give you my, my interpretation, there's pre-qualification, that's the lowest standard. Right. Basically, it's generally just have a conversation and pull your credit. That's pre-qualification. Assuming you told me the truth, we should be okay, right. Right? right? That's the weakest kind of offer letter. The The second uh, level up is pre-approval. Now, I've seen your pay stubs, I've seen your W-2s, I've seen your taxes, I've seen your bank <laughs> statements, to know that according to my strength as a loan officer, um, whether or not I believe you can approve. There's a third level that has entered the marketplace and that we are are trying to take advantage of to strengthen buyer's offers. And this is rare, so let me say that to those listening out there. Um, there is a credit approval. Right. Credit approval is now the next level up where I'm gonna pretend or I'm gonna do your loan uh, as if it's a real, real deal. Meaning I'm gonna put you through my underwriting process. You're gonna sign some disclosure documents, authorizing background checks and different things that, that we do in the normal full loan approval. But it's it's more than just loan officer. Now it's an underwriter. They're gonna look at all your finances and they're gonna give you an approval based upon your finances subject to you finding the property. Gotcha. So that level is is now sort of the premium in the marketplace. <clears throat> you want to stand out the most, that's the, the best you can get out there Excellent. other than paying cash. You get that letter from us, you can now write really short contingencies. You don't need you know, hardly a finance contingency at all because I've approved you credit wise. Assuming you don't quit your job, right. you don't spend all your money, you don't stop paying your bills, you'll get that loan. Gotcha. So what would an appraisal contingency and a loan contingency be for someone like that? Oh, great question. We have to deal with the idea that the appraisal is being done by a third party to us. Um, it's it, there's it, They're kept independent from the mortgage process now right. intentionally, right? Yep. But anyways, it, it comes to what is their capacity, right? So a regular appraisal, at least in my world right now, about eight, nine, 10 days, somewhere right in that mark, is how long it will take from the time I order it with the appraiser to the time I get it back, somewhere between That's eight really and 10 good. days. One of the ways for you to strengthen your offer is to offer a shorter appraisal contingency, right? And so in our system with regular appraisals, so like uh, FHA and conventional and jumbo appraisals, these type of things, we can offer the appraiser a rush fee. Hey, do this extra fast for me. We're gonna give you $200 extra mm -hmm. as a fee right. for that extra, that speed, right? So we can, we can buy performance to a certain level, right? The more you're willing to offer, the more they're willing to jump through hoops for you. And that's a way for you as a buyer to say, I'm willing to spend an extra $200 on my appraisal so I can get it back in a week. Right instead of two weeks. Finance contingency, the next big big clock in your contract. Buyers are getting squeezed on this all the time, yes. right? Yeah. From my perspective, that clock really talks about how long do you need to keep this, to keep your get out of jail free card on your contract right. before you're willing to let it go away. So in my mind, you know, a normal time frame on that might be something like 21, 25 days, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. That's a typical time frame that you'd see in our market. <clears throat> and so long as my buyer, and once again, this is my Felter standard, um, so long as my buyer knows that they're able to get their loan by the end of that time period, we're safe, yeah. we're, we're fine. That doesn't mean that your loan is totally done. Correct. It doesn't mean that you've satisfied every condition that you have. You just, in my opinion, reasonably know you can satisfy what the loan wants from you.
You've been listening to Las Vegas Real Estate Now. If you ever have a question about real estate or any of the other topics we cover, just call me off air or text me at 702-203-1165. You can also check us out on the web at lvrealestateradio.com or on our handle on social media at LV Real Estate Radio. We'll meet you on the radio next Saturday at 11 a.m. right here on the new 101.5 FM 720 AM Kdon, the talk of Las Vegas.